Hello. So, <laughs> I'll show you what's going on. Let's try and cut something with my ridiculous setup. I must note, my mouse will not work after I use the plasma. So there's definitely some, still some <laughs> interference. So much that the USB uh, just lost connection with the mouse every time. So I have to fix that by using ferrites. Uh, and I'm not sure if you can see it, but yeah, there's my aluminium carton box. And it made all the difference in the PC, like really it, it slowed down the Gco when I engage the plasma and now with this stupid box it's not even completely sealed or something cables are shielded to the drivers etc but uh, I also grounded the board and thus the shielding of the cabling to this box and from the box there is a cable going to the outlet my power outlet and then connected to the earth pin it's all really janky. <laughs> really, it's amazingly, amazingly janky. Uh, there is something I want to try with engaging the plasma before, even before uh, it actually hits this, the metal. Now it has to glide on the metal and I hope I can get away with just hovering above it when the arc is started. But for now, I have to touch it or it won't start. Uh, it's also <laughs> the method used. I've seen somebody else use it. Uh, it works, but it's probably janky as fuck as well. Uh, and not ideal and probably not recommended. Uh, this is the first time I use it except for these holes. It's on 20 amp. It's very thin steel sheet, half a millimeter thick. And I'm gonna try to do some A letter, see if that works. I mean, it's all kind of makeshift and it smells like burnt wood because underneath this metal is wood and it might catch fire, I don't know. I wanted to do it here, but I don't think it extends that far. Could try, but then all the stuff ends up here. Which is a good idea in the end, but now there's all kinds of stuff. I'd rather burn my wood for now. So let's light a cigarette and I'll show you how stupid I look. Because I'm scared of shit to burn my eyeballs out. Yo, what up? <laughs> It's a, um, yeah, it is like a sunglasses, but it's, had, it's shading four or something, which would be ideal for plasma and, you know, some other stuff, but not welding. So I can see a little bit, but not very much. Um, yeah, engaging all of this is quite weird because I have to use the trigger still. I didn't, you know, make a uh, relay contact to the controller, etc. Because I'm not, I was not even sure if my machine would work when the plasma is engaged. Because it might fuck all over. It might still do, actually, because it's losing the mouse every time. So that's not a good indication. Let me see. I think I got everything. I'm even going to use a glove. I have welding gloves, but this will do for now. Twenty amps, and the air is set to, I believe, four bar, and the speed is set to three thousand millimeter a second. Which I don't know if that's good or not. Uh, we will see. So I have to uh, engage the program with one hand until the mouse doesn't work anymore, and I have to trigger the plasma with the other. So. <laughs> Here goes nothing. So now it's at the height it's set to, and if I push again, it will start. Let's go. <laughs> this 
this the perching of air after is is a good thing but it does it for a very long time so long that the compressor starts so i i'm begin to wonder if this compressor is even able to deliver enough air apparently not I mean, it's pretty long it, it, it went from eight to six bar in this really tiny amount of time so that's not cool but I guess maybe I don't need that much air and I'm pretty sure this one because it's a cheap one uh, uses a lot of air and by the looks of it, especially when it's not even doing any, anything, but just to cool it down. But for a very long time, longer than usual. But let's see if we cut something. So this is all... Oh yeah, that looks <laughs> rather impressive to be fair. For me at least, it's my first time. Here's my G. And it came on from here and the let's see how the part looks. I'm not even interested in making parts like this. I just want to cut holes and slots. That's all I want to do. Yeah. That looks hot. That's why you have a water bath normally. That's my G. It has some drust for sure. So I probably either use more air or um, more air or maybe higher amperage, go faster even. Maybe I go too slow. Let's see if I can put it here and I'll, I'll take you outside because there's not much light here. So there you have it. It's probably not too size because I don't know the the width it cuts at. I'll have to test that. And here's the dross. There's some dross there. So is it perfect? No, but is it good? I think it's rather cool. Just needs some cleanup. I am very pleased. Let's see if my mouse works. I don't think the mouse works anymore. No. That cuts out every time it starts. And this is how you create a potential fire. It's a lot of heat. To scorch it like this in a very short time. So yeah smelly in here and uh, I need to have I have to cut here in this side and I need a small water bath as well also the torch is not aligned properly it's standing a little bit a little bit like this so that doesn't help either but this is typically one of those really janky shitty tests that I like to do because now I know I could use this crappy torch plasma cutter of 130 euros on my CNC with my insanely good shielded box carton box I am so pleased this is of course not the set of how I'm gonna use it but at least I know I don't need to buy a new plasma which I almost did and apparently especially if you're new to this kind of stuff I think it's nice to fuck around with a cheap thing that doesn't cost 1200 euros damn I'm happy 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 now I'm gonna scavenge one of those ferrite cores for my mouse so it keeps functioning would be nice now I have to unplug it every time and plug it in again so let's go inside damn I'm happy I'll disable the noise for the neighbors what I'm not happy about is um, the compressor um, going on so fast. So I'll have to look at the uh, meter to see if it it can hold before bar. That would be nice. If that's the case, then 
all is fine. So I found a cable, which is a very weird cable. A high, high performance computer cable, whatever that means. And it's USB to USB. I'm not sure why I have this. Because that's, uh, you know, uh, should be impossible, but it is not, apparently. I want this bead here, this one. So it is molded, over molded. So I'll try to cut it open, I guess, with a bleed. I could go to the store tomorrow and just see if they got one of these, but this is the more shitty way, which I prefer. I wonder if this is even... Is this fake? Because I should not be able to cut through it completely. I think this is... Either this is filled plastic with ferrite, which could well be the case. Or this is just completely nonsense. Yeah. There is no core in here. Yeah. There is, there is no core in this stuff, so it's either filled plastic, which is rather bad, I guess, but if it works. I don't want to gear up actually to do it again, but maybe it would just start it. So this is the mouse cable, and apparently it's fragile, it takes up A lot of noise. Really, it would be ridiculous if this works, but I'm not sure if it has to touch each other. I guess so. Only way to find out, find out is doing it. I'll try the crazy loop thing. So the nozzle is connected to the ground directly, so it can start start in the air, but for a very short time. But that should be enough to see if my mouse is gone. Enable the plasma. Put on my stupid glasses. See if the mouse fucks off. <laughs> Still got a mouse, so I guess that might work. Well, I will discover when I cut something else, but by the looks of it, it doesn't uh, disconnect from the computer now. So that was a quick fix. So apparently, it is plastic with ferrite in them, so it's not an actual ferrite bead, which probably will work much better, but apparently, this is enough. Ooh, the smell of ozone. See you next time. Bye-bye.